Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 showing you a match I recently played with Vicarin. I was playing against him a few times on, well, last Tuesday, a couple days ago, and I just wanted to test some strategies because we we're trying to figure out some stuff with the way Grekim early game works. So, it seems like CISO is a really easy time, just fast expanding around the map and not really having to worry about what anyone else does. So they can just fast expand, build up a ton of stuff, overwhelm their opponent with sheer numbers. And Vicarin was pretty convinced that there was a way to stop this, so this is our game trying to figure out if there's a way to stop this. We've already done some tests earlier where I was CISO and he was Grekim, and this is another one where I'm CISO and he's Grekim, to see if I can just pull it off. And here is the test. So I'm starting out with 5 LC and 1 QP. Bit of a mistake actually, I meant to do 6 LC, but this should still work. This marine is going in the back to continue to saturate these boxes with LC, and the second marine is going to my natural right here. We decided to play on Remnant Springs because it's a map quite unlike Desecrated Temple, which I've been showing off recently, in that it doesn't have a lot of expansions, but what expansions it has have quite a few open spots to expand to. It's more the old style of Akron map where you have six or five LC boxes, two or three QP boxes, and they're open on all sides except for the line. This is not a paradigm I'm likely to stick to, but it is a paradigm that Remnant Springs was built for. And I figured this is, like, the Desecrated Temple paradigm works okay, but it allows for this fast expand strategy that's really difficult to counter, so I thought, well, maybe Remnant Springs will work out better. So, right where I am, I'm at the 306 mark, and my Special Ops has found Vikrin. He is definitely playing Grekum, I know that much. Special Ops isn't really doing anything though, it is dealing some damage, but the time wave hasn't even come through of Vikrin being properly Grekim, so... The Special Ops is destroying the Arcticus that was sent over to the westernmost... Miner uh, sorry, westernmost <laughs> boxes. See this Arcticus here is going to the westernmost boxes, the Special Ops will kill it in about two minutes or so, but... That's not super important, most players don't use their Arcticus very much anyway. So the fact that it's been destroyed is not going to be particularly important. Vikarin is very quickly getting some Octos to his natural, so both of us are expanding to our naturals very rapidly. Because this map is fairly small, it's quite easy to do a fast expand like that for any race. The hard part for Grekim in general is that when they've tried to fast expand, it's difficult to defend their fast expansion. CISO can just plop down factories, plop down armories, and armories 1400 health, factories have usually about 1200 health. It's not difficult to do this. Now Special Ops, of course, is coming in, and from my point of view, I actually have pretty much beaten him in the future, since his progen tribe is about to die. This is really unimportant, I'm just going here to choke that my factory is here, it's once again fairly strong. Imports, factory, oh, imports are quite weak, factories are quite strong, and I can easily plop them down. So this is how CISO usually went around, they just plop down factories everywhere they went, on top of the resource processor, so that this giant tank structure that's also producing reinforcements to protect the RPs. As a result, it's incredibly difficult to harass CISO expansions. Vikram, on the other hand, is about four minutes down from when I am, the 2.30 mark, just getting his expansion set up and not really worrying too much about fast forwarding towards the future, more worried about getting everything precisely right, and his reef is getting built at the 2.46 mark, which actually is fairly normal. It's It seems slow just because people generally fast reefed, but because he's going for a fast expand strategy, 2.46 isn't too bad for reef timing. Two Faros and Octos coming. This Octo is probably going to be RPs. These Faros are probably going to be used for defending the Arcticus or just harassing in general. An Octo is also going to my future expansion on the east side. So he will be able to scout out and stop my... basically intercept my Marine. I'm pretty sure this is what Vikrin is planning on doing, is intercepting my Marine, stop it from building in the first place, so the entire base just can't happen. From my point of view, the 436 mark, jumping back, now it has been partially intercepted. The factory and some of the RPs have been built, but the Marine was killed. So Vikrin has been partially successful in intercepting my base building. Though not completely successful, I still have my west base and I still have the RPs up. So you can see this is when, when it happened, the 405 mark, the Marine comes in, is able to build, but has to get killed because the Octo brings them zero health, and at zero health the Marine must die. I'm not kidding, that's how it works in engine. It's at zero health they just blow up. But I digress. The Lancer coming in to help defend, to try to stop this Octo from getting rid of the... Well, getting rid of the RPs, but it does get rid of one of the RPs. The second RP is going to probably prote be protected, but the main issue is that the Octo has now just come in here 
Now attacking my natural after being built, rather than attacking the natural that's about to be built. Special ops help helping defend the west base. So I'm still, at this point, in this iteration, able to defend fairly well, but Vikarin has changed things up a bit, so I'm not going to be able to expand as easily as it was before. And I don't get a factory up because I don't have enough liquid crystal in time, but I am able to still get a factory on the west, on the eastern side, and my marine on the eastern side is still alive, so I'm losing some RPs, but I'm still not set back too far. Vikarin is clearly trying to go for a harassment strategy, rather than going pure for fast expand. And this seems to be working okay, but it's still not as good as it could be. From his point of view, though, he has actually fully intercepted my base construction, or almost fully intercepted it. He's definitely damaged the Marine heavily before it can start to really get in some RPs, but it doesn't look like it's going to be able to stop the first two RPs that are coming in now. Regardless, it has stopped the factory, and that is big. The fact that it stopped me from building that one factory in the eastern side means it's going to be a lot harder for me to defend that expansion and to consolidate it, so that expansion is pretty much open for him now. This marine on the west side is going to try to build a factory. I think it'll be able to live long enough, and there's definitely enough resources. I have 250 liquid crystal now, as opposed to 64, which I had before. Yes, it's able to build a factory, but I think if the factory, if he starts, if he starts targeting the factory, he might be able to just kill it before it comes up. Yeah, the import has been destroyed before it comes up. I think the factory builds too quickly for the units he has. No, the factory will survive, but it's going to be heavily damaged by the time it's actually complete. It will be almost dead. And at the same time, Vikarin is building up his Spire. He will be getting air units quite quickly. He doesn't have a lot of QP, though. He has 233 LC, 10 QP. He is getting more QP, though, and that will help out. I, on the other hand, have been going for more importers, more factors in my base, trying to consolidate my buildings into my base and natural rather than worrying about my expansions in the middle of the map. And harassing with the ATHCs and the Lancers, trying to get rid of the Triad, but not really doing that great of a job, unfortunately. And also trying to defend this eastern expansion, but it's really no use. Vikern has already destroyed it. And now Faro and Octo are able to get rid of the Lancer. Well, Faro's get, getting rid of the Lancer, Octo's getting rid of the RPs. And the Octo and Faro's are getting rid of the factories in the west side of the map. It's still not complete. And I am about two minutes up from here, not really worrying too much about this. Just more worried about trying to build up everything I can to finish him off. Try to just get rid of the harassment forces. Since I'm pretty sure he can't have expanded too far. Not sure what he has in terms of tech, but he back when he is with the 520 mark, he does have Farapods building up, he does have air units, he has definitely the resources to get more, and I also have plenty of resources, 522 LC, 296 QP, at this point I could actually go for a Chrono Rush, although I don't, because I really don't think it's worth the cost for units. I do get machinery, however, because I do want to get the advanced units, but I do not want to try to get Chrono Porting, because that is really difficult to do. Oh, right, and this is... oh. Sorry about that, there's... <laughs> no, anyway, sorry, when you are immediately behind a player, it does have a tendency to slow down a bit. Which is why you are locked to a player when you get near them. That is the reason for the particular engine work. Anyhow, Vikran is at the 550 mark, very near the unplayable past, and... Getting rid of my western expansion as well, so he's done a very good job of intercepting my expansions and stopping them from coming up in the first place. Now. When I am, my expansions are no longer existing, but I do have a secondary attempt at an expansion coming in. Macrofab's defense turrets to consolidate it, with the Marine coming in from behind to actually build it in the first place. Vikarin is still focusing at the 554 mark, I'm at the 730 mark, but one and a half minutes up, and he has legal class. So he has legal class, and I'm getting machinery at this point. He could easily grab some legal class units, probably Sepi Legos, because he loves Sepi Legos. His heavy pot isn't doing a great job getting rid of my ATHCs, but it is able to get rid of them enough with the Faro. Sorry, I was going to say getting rid of my ATHCs and the Lancer, but the Lancer went over to the west side, tried to deal with the Faro's attacking the west side RP, but that's also fairly fruitless. My base has been pretty much reduced to my main, and my and a Faro pod coming in on the southwest corner that I'm going to have to deal with very rapidly. The Sephi pods coming in, they are getting fended off by the mechs, but... Going back to 639 mark, but a half minute down from where I was. The Lancer is now attacking the Civic Pod, and it's also going down. So my forces are not doing too hot. They are trying their best, but they are not doing too hot. I really got machinery too late. Vikran, on the other hand, has definitely got his self or his army in a good spot. He's got himself in a very nice spot for building up his base. Tvester is being built to consolidate, and a Farpod coming in as well to help fight, but it's not going to be doing enough. What I really need to do is get rid of this far pod back here, which I need to get a Tornado to do, or a Special Ops, but once that happens, 
Either way, the Lancers will be able to take care of the Farbot in short order. With Faros coming to my base, there's actually... This is very pressuring for me. So I've gone from controlling all the map to that being completely undone and only controlling my half of the map. So I think this, this seemed to work decently well, but I wasn't probably playing as hard as I could have been. Still, the game's not over. Farpods are coming in, and Cloaking trying to harass... So, doing a very good job with the Farpod harassment. Tornado coming in on this side to help out support the mechs and actually detect the Farpods as they come in. Defensor can't get up right now, but the Farpod is being destroyed. So the Farpods are, if not destroyed, they're at least being distracted by... Tornado. But the Tornado is going over to my main base to try to protect the main base, which is in a really bad spot right now. Jumping back to the 754 mark, actually, I'm jumping back to the, I'm at the 819 mark. I have, from my point of view, gotten rid of it about 30 seconds later. Vikarin is, from his point of view, just seeing the Tornad coming in to get rid of the Farapod, just to finish it off. And he has finished it off, but the Farapod is still in my natural, getting rid of my RPs. Not slowing my economy down too much because this has already been used up, but my QP is pretty short. I need more QP. I This is one of the reasons I didn't go for Chrono Rush because I don't have enough QP to really support it. Though, with Chrono Porting, I might have actually had a chance. At least, in this particular skirmish, I might have had a chance to get out of here. But I am harassing the natural. So Vikarin, however, has a ton of LC and QP saved up. I really should have attacked his main. Normally, Grekum will build up a lot of domes in their main, so doing this is a bad idea. But seeing as he hasn't done that, and I could have easily just got that up, that would have been a very good idea. However, I did not do that, so I'm going to have to deal with just trying to defend my own base and harass around his... Which, like I said, he has a 1,000 LC, which do, does nothing for me. So right now, Vikarin is in a great spot. He is getting Sepi Legos, as I predicted. He is, well, I did play this game, so I already knew. But he is getting Sepi Legos. He is going to be able to destroy pretty much everything from artillery range. Sepi Legos have very high sight range, a little bit larger than turret attack range, and this turret is completely useless against them. But I do have mechs, and I will... Do what I can with them. I have mechs in my base, and I'm at the 1043 mark when we're sending them out to try to deal with the Sepi Legos. Sepi Legos have not hit me yet, from my point of view. Don't go to the 10 minute mark. I do see the Sepi Legos, and I know they're coming, and trying to get a frigate to help out, but one frigate is not going to be enough. I'm going to need to get a bunch of mechs, and there they are. My mechs have been built. One of them is building a defense turret in the back to try to make sure no more harassment comes in, though it would have been more useful earlier on. And the other mechs coming in to try to deal with the Sepi Ligo, but the Sepi Ligo does have very powerful anti ground attack, and the mech is useless against it. The Sepi Ligos are being very destructive. While Vikarin is able to, with the Sepi Ligos, stop any attacks. Especially aborting the attacks on my natural, just to scout around, make sure I didn't do anything else. At this point, I get a frigate into his main base and start harassing a bit, but it's not doing too much. Sepi coming in, it will be able to destroy it very quickly in the most recent patch seppies have been buffed to the point that they actually are very effective anti-air and so using air against them is almost useless but a tank is able to get rid of one of the seppi ligos the other seppi ligo is still getting through the other two seppi ligos actually are still getting through the mech is also dealing some damage but not enough vikarin has really managed to turn this around made this work so he had managed to get early harassment in here pulling off that early harassment was quite impressive though one thing he mentioned to me after the game was that he only was able to do it because the map was rather small. And that, it's like, the map is moderately large, CISO has an easy enough time. If the map is quite large and doesn't have a lot of expansions, which none of my maps are like that, but Kratoria is like that, another map by another map maker, the, the harassment is a lot easier to pull off, it's a lot easier for Grekum to work it out. So I will be trying to make maps that are more along that paradigm so that there's better balance between the races. And at this point, it does look like he is doing a very good job. He's getting rid of this turret, and he does have no overwhelming force on me right now. I'm trying to do what I can in the future, but really, every time we've come in is just putting me in a worse and worse situation. As I'm trying to build up mechs frantically to get rid of the Sepi Legos. Really, mechs are the best ground based anti air that. Well, okay, maybe heavy tanks are the best ground based anti air that CISO has. But for what I have and the amount of. Actually, you know, I really should be building tanks. That would have been a good idea. Build tanks, build ground units, get heavy tanks from there, because that is the best ground-based anti-air that CISO has. Also, they can detonate, in fact, so I'd be able to use Sepi Ligos against Vikarin. Regardless, I did not do that. That would have been a very good idea. And, because I'm not a CISO player. I am a usually Grekin player, sometimes Vekir player. I'm not a CISO player. I was just playing around with this to see if it was possible. As I theorized that you might be able to just fast expand the CISO, and even if you aren't trying... A, 
An opponent playing Grekin that is trying still won't be able to fend it off. Apparently I was wrong. You can, in fact, fend it off quite effectively as Grekin. So Vikram back to the 1229 mark. Coming in with force, everything goes is very able to get rid of my bases. My Macrofab has been completely destroyed. My factory is going down in a hurry. And while I have mechs in my main base, I do not have the current energy to easily command them if I were to go this far back in time. As you can see, it's only about three orders available at this point in time, and I cannot send my units back. I am trying, though, but it's simply not enough. I'm not going to be able to get rid of these heavy Legos in time. And like I said, apart from heavy tanks, I really don't have any options other than mechs. At this point, I think that Vikran does have this in the bag. RPs are trying to move out to get rid of this, but Vikran is going to be able to take care of the RPs before they even get out. So there's no way for the RPs to escape. Trying to escape to another base and completely fruitless. And of course, at this point, my I have two LC boxes, three QP boxes. I don't have a lot to work with. And half a dozen mechs. I don't think there's any way I can pull this out, but it there might be possible. No, there's really no way I can pull this out. The Seven Legos have destroyed my importers, and the mechs are trying to come in to finish the job, but they really don't have much of a chance. Even if they do, my natural's been destroyed. I don't have any safe expansion to go to, and my figure's coming in to try to harass, but like I said before, Vikran has so much in the bank, there's no harassment I can do other than destroying his triads in the unplayable past that would be of un any use, really. And I don't have the units to do so, or the current order to do so. So at this point, I'm just going to try my best to get my one order that'll hopefully do the trick, or actually I have, well, okay, ten possible orders. That hopefully will do the trick in getting rid of these Sepi Legos, and at least at least getting rid of the Sepi Legos, getting me in a position where I can defend, rebuild a bit, and work from there. But really, Vikran is, such a, is in such a good position that he will be able to easily take the match from here. So one thing about Vikran's style is a tendency to build up a little bit near the present, and then build up more and more as he gets closer to the unplayable past. So it's very difficult to figure out what he has in stock because he tends to not get his full strategy going until it's next to the unplayable past. So countering that is very difficult. And anyway, two factories are going to be going down. Is that the 1536 mark? At the 1502 mark, 30 seconds earlier, I'm going... I have my mech set up. I, I don't seem to be setting him up at all to attack. There are really, like I said, hardly any current energy left deal with this, and even if the mechs were to go forward, six Epiligos is way too much for a dozen mechs to deal with. Even with the four frigates, it's... there's pretty much no hope unless I'm able to somehow separate the mechs... or sorry, somehow separate the Epiligos so the mechs can pick them off one at a time, and no, that's not happening, and GG. So that was the game. I hope you enjoyed that. So yes, Grekum can definitely beat CISO on smaller maps. It's just rather difficult to pull off if you don't have the right map size or map paradigm. But it can be done, so let's just show off how it can be done. So I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night.